Hi students, greetings to all. Today our topic would be transgenic fish production. See, uh, I would like to present a report on the research achievement. Uh, students, can you guess what this is? Most probably, uh, see most of you may not have uh, come across this uh, report article. Uh, see, this is a research uh, achievement uh, that had been made in case of transgenic uh, fish. Okay, the report or the article says, new prospects for gene altered fish raise hope and alarm. And what scientists basically did in this uh, fish was that, uh, the fish was goldfish. And what they did well was that, uh, see, they just inserted the human growth gene into these fish. Say for about 3000 goldfish, they just inserted the human growth uh, gene. And they just uh, got a genetically altered uh, carp with high growth. Okay, so this was published uh, way back in 1919. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, I'll just show another uh, article. Maybe this uh, you would be familiar with, uh, not the article anyhow, but you may be familiar with the pictures. Uh, see, uh, can you guess what those pictures are? Yeah, those pictures, uh, see, uh, we have got uh, the different varieties or uh, to say uh, the different uh, colors of zebra fish. To be more precise, fluorescent colors of zebra fish. Okay, so these fluorescent uh, transgenic uh, zebra fish, they were produced uh, at Singapore uh, by a research team that was uh, led by uh, Gong. Okay, what they did was that uh, they just incorporated some fluorescent uh, genes into the zebra fish, thus turning it into a transgenic zebra fish. Now, I have been uh, say, uh, saying about uh, these transgenic uh, fish and uh, you know what exactly is meant by transgenics or uh, a transgenic fish. You know these transgenics, they are also known as the genetically modified organisms or the living modified organisms. So these transgenics, they are nothing but these organisms, they have got uh, some transgene or a modified gene that has been inserted into their genome. Right, they have got a modified gene uh, that is being inserted into their genome so that they are genetically modified because it's a living organism, they are also known as the living modified organism. I said uh, we are inserting this transgene into the organism. Uh, see, why do we do this? See, we have got plenty of reasons to choose a transgenic fish or to adopt the mythology methodology for producing a, a transgenic animal. Why? Because these uh, fish, they serve as a model for human diseases. They, we can develop novel strains uh, from these uh, fish uh, and these strains uh, could be with resistance to diseases or else to say higher growth. And this could be, uh, these fish could be able to uh, detect uh, the environmental uh, pollution. And then, uh, you know, there are some nutritional benefits also related to these transgenic uh, fish. And moreover, you know, we have got the economic benefits. Why economic benefits? Uh, because, uh, see, in agriculture, our major motto is to increase the growth um, in a relatively uh, less period of time so that we get more economics. So, these transgenics, they just prove to be useful in all this way. See, now we'll just move on to the stages in production of transgenics or how we go for the production of transgenics. See, we have got uh, very many different steps in uh, production of transgenics and these include First, the identification of the gene or of interest or else to say the uh, choice of the gene of interest, the isolation and amplification of the genes of interest, the cloning the genes of interest. Then we have got a gene constraint, uh, which I would be uh, dealing uh, in detail. And then we have got the strategies for the gene transfer. Then we have the integration sites. And at last, we have got the expression and inheritance of the genes. Okay, now dealing with the first step. See, first step in production of a transgenics or a transgenic animal is that we have to go for the identification of a particular gene to say the choice of a gene of interest. Say, for example, in agriculture, see, uh, as I uh, said earlier, uh, what we look into aquaculture or what we uh, usually do in aquaculture is that uh, we just culture the fish and uh, our aim is to get a cultured fish um, that uh, with increased uh, growth and that too in less period of time. 
So um, we just aim at uh, the growth of these fishes. So one of our basic choices of uh, the gene of interest would be the uh, growth gene, right? So uh, that forms uh, one of the uh, genes of interest or uh, we do choose uh, the uh, growth gene. And in cases where we have got uh, these cold temperatures, uh, you know, uh, this growth is uh, retarded. So what we do is that, uh, see there are certain um, fish uh, which have got the antifreeze proteins in them naturally. So we just uh, use these uh, genes and we just incorporate it into uh, more economically viable species so that uh, they can just uh, resist this ice formation or uh, the ice crystal formation so as to attain better growth. So that would be another choice um, of a gene. And uh, the next thing what I would say is we have got the green fluorescent uh, protein which is extracted from the uh, jelly uh, fish uh, so that uh, this could be incorporated into fish and this could uh, these fish could be used as models uh, to just uh, record the water pollution and that's another gene of interest and then we have got another uh, genes of interest maybe if you remember the first picture that I had shown you uh, that is a fluorescent uh, zebra fish uh, see they have got uh, the fluorescent color and you know these fluorescent color they just capture the markets so these fluorescent proteins they could again be brought into the normal fish so that we can get uh, more varieties of ornamental species, right? So that is with regard to the identification of the gene of interest or the choice of a gene of particular interest. Now we move on to the next step, the isolation and the amplification of the genes of interest. So now we have chosen a gene of uh, interest uh, based on different uh, factors, we just go for its isolation. See, how do we isolate? So in general cases, we have got the um, library from where it is easily accessible. You know, library in the sense, uh, these are genomic libraries. So we have got uh, gene sequences, short sequences of GNA already deposited in the library. And so it could be accessed. And see, once we get uh, access of these uh, sequences, we just go for its amplification. Now, how we do the amplification? It is by the method of polymerase chain reaction where we can get millions of copies of this DNA. Okay. So, uh, after completion of this step, that is isolation and the amplification of genes of interest, we just go to the next step, that is the cloning the genes of interest. See, now we have got millions of copies of DNA at hand. So, now we have to clone these genes. And how we do this cloning? See, we just insert this target sequence of DNA into the gene uh, construct. See, I'll be dealing with the gene construct in the next slide. Uh, so, we just uh, incorporate uh, this uh, sequence of DNA into the construct and uh, this is then ligated with the plasmid. So, you know, these plasmids, they act as vectors or vehicles for this um, uh, cloning procedure and uh, we can just uh, plate it out. And you know, this uh, construct, it has also got a reporter so that we can just mark the presence of this trans gene. So, as to say whether it has been incorporated into the uh, original uh, genomic structure. Okay, and then uh, the gene construct, uh, I'll be dealing it in the next slide and say uh, after this uh, gene construct, we have got the strategies for the gene transfer. You know, the strategies for the gene transfer, it just denotes uh, the methodologies or the methods adopted for the transfer of gene uh, into the organism, right? So we'll be dealing uh, that too in uh, detail and see once we just uh, incorporate or we just transfer this uh, gene of interest to the organism, we just move on to the next uh, point that is integration sites. You know, I said we are just um, transferring this uh, gene of interest into the uh, animal. Uh, see the selected animal but what happens is that in certain cases uh, this uh, gene or the DNA that we just um, incorporate uh, into the uh, body of these animals uh, they may be degraded by the enzymes in certain cases but in certain cases what happens is that uh, these genes they may persist but then uh, see they will not be integrated and uh, yet there are other cases wherein uh, the integration is partial. Okay, so there are different types of integration uh, sites and uh, you know, uh, the next uh, step that is the expression and inheritance of gene, I said uh, this gets integrated and there are different steps and uh, one thing you should know that, uh, see, even if uh, we just integrate uh, this uh, target gene into the genomic um, of the genome uh, of the organism, uh, it's not possible that it gets fully expressed. Maybe only if this target gene gets expressed to its uh, high level, uh, it just passes on to the progeny. Uh, 
imagine the case when this target gene it's not um, expressed to that uh, level that is a high level maybe it is expressed just at a, an acceptable level it's not necessary that they may be transferred to the next generation right so now uh, we'll just um, uh, move on with the uh, gene construct i said uh, we have got the gene uh, construct see the uh, gene construct they are just uh, uh, sequences of dna which act as the vectors or the vehicles and these are incorporated into the plasmids i said these would be ligated into the plasmids so what happens here is that uh, see we have got a promoter uh, uh, part uh, and in the promoter part it just controls the activities of the construct the gene construct okay then we have uh, a place or uh, we have a site to incorporate the gene of interest that is uh, the uh, gene that we have chosen so there is the site of um, to incorporate the gene of interest and uh, you know this uh, is uh, again linked with the reporter uh, gene uh, see this reporter gene uh, it just um, helps us to identify whether the target uh, gene it has been integrated into the genome or not and then we have got the terminator uh, sequence okay uh, so this is a structure of the gene uh, construct and this is the construct which we just uh, ligate it with the plasmids okay and then we plate out the plasmids and then we just get uh, clones of the dna right and you know now we just move on uh, to the techniques of uh, production that is how do we do or uh, what are the strategies that we adopt to incorporate these genes into the organism okay the first uh, step is the micro injection uh, you know these pictures they just uh, show the um, micro injection of the uh, transgene into the uh, fertilized egg okay see here this is the fertilized egg uh, see we have got the um, micro um, needle and uh, see this has got the uh, transgene and this uh, needle it uh, just injects the transgene into the main uh, pronucleus of the fertilized egg okay this just gets incorporated into the male uh, nucleus of the fertilized egg see this micro injection is the most common uh, technique and uh, see uh, it's mostly used in uh, almost uh, all the cases maybe i said uh, the zebra fish uh, so uh, it had uh, been used in case of producing uh, these transgenic zebra fish and it's the most uh, common technique but one of the disadvantages um, with this micro injection technique is that uh, see this is uh, time consuming and uh, laborious because uh, you know in case of uh, fish uh, we have got a uh, very number of eggs and uh, these eggs they have got a codon which is uh, harder okay so injecting uh, these um, genes into the egg it's not necessary that they go into the male pronucleus but then it goes into the cytoplasm okay so we have we have some difficulties with regard to this uh, method of uh, production of this transgenic animal now we just move on to the next technique that is electroporation see from the term electroporation it's just uh, a vague idea is just creating pores on the membrane okay so here we do this by just applying the electric field okay we just apply the electric field so that the cell membrane it gets permeabilized okay uh, so that uh, the spores are uh, formed and you know uh, we just inject this uh, chosen gene uh, through this um, pores of this uh, membrane okay and see so this again uh, the electroporation when, uh, when uh, compared with the micro injection technique it's a uh, most effective uh, method again uh, here it's a tedious procedure again uh, it's due to the nature of the fertilized uh, egg or to say the fish eggs with uh, tough chorion and uh, removing the chorion from all these eggs it uh, often proves to be very tedious now next uh, we have got the sperm mediated gene transfer method wherein uh, see we have got the spermatozoa and these spermatozoa they are capable of binding with uh, DNA. This fertilizes an egg and then it is then carried on uh, to the embryo. Okay and then we have got the retroviral vector wherein we use uh, or uh, we make use of the uh, retrovirus for the uh, process but you know this again is a laborious process and is also uh, not cost effective. See, uh, now having said about the uh, production of transgenics and also the uh, advantages or um, why we go for the production of transgenics, it happens that uh, there are also certain risk uh, factors uh, that are uh, linked with the production of these GMOs or uh, the transgenics. Uh, See, these risk factors, they would be classified broadly into uh, the human health, 
uh, the biodiversity and the animal welfare. Okay, coming to the human health, uh, you know, this uh, transgenic animals, uh, in most cases, uh, see the DNA uh, of the fish, uh, be it either transgenics or the other uh, uh, fish, uh, the DNA that would be easily degraded in our body. But then uh, in case of uh, these uh, transgenics, we make use of the virus vectors so that uh, these would not be degraded. And there are uh, chances that these can cause uh, further diseases, say for example, cancer. Okay, and again, uh, one more risk related to human health is that uh, these have the abilities or the capabilities uh, to change or to convert or to bring an alteration on the uh, gut microflora. Okay, and next coming to the biodiversity. Uh, see, these uh, GMOs uh, or the transgenics, uh, see, this is not a natural population. Uh, these uh, animals, uh, maybe uh, you know that we have a different choice of uh, genes and we have we are integrating these genes into their bodies. Uh, but what happens if this uh, just escapes into the uh, nature? Okay, So that always poses a risk. These uh, organisms, if they escape into the nature, nature they just uh, breed with the natural population and then uh, they can affect the biodiversity. So what we do is that we just go for the physical containment and the biological containment. Physical containment in the sense we just uh, keep them or we just culture them under closed system so that they do not have any contact with the uh, environment. And in biological containment what we do is that we just go for the production of sterile fishes. Okay. And then we have got the animal welfare. See, um, I said uh, the transgenics there is the procedure or uh, the transgenic uh, fish production is a procedure wherein we go for uh, the integration of a foreign gene into the body. So after all, it's a foreign gene and we do not uh, know uh, the effect of this gene uh, to its um, fullest. Okay, so what happens is that in certain cases, it had been reported in certain cases that uh, the integration or the transfer of these genes into the organisms uh, that can um, cause a change in their skeletal structure, uh, maybe it can hinder their uh, growth or uh, maybe it can um, initiate the onset of uh, diseases. Okay, so these GMOs, it also poses risk to the animal uh, welfare uh, that is being experimented. And this area of research uh, is being experimented uh, day by day. Uh, but you know, researchers uh, still uh, need to come forward or uh, researchers has to be um, uh, done uh, more intensively. Uh, so as to product a transgene fish which does not uh, pose a risk to either the human health or the environment or the animals themselves. Thank you.